the corporate office is buzzing with uh, teenagers and teenage energy today and yesterday. So <laughs> yes. very exciting. And like we were saying, the first time that we've had the kids back since 2019. So you guys excited yeah, about that? Surreal. Of course. Yeah, you bet exciting. we're excited. It's uh, like we just took a deep breath and now we're ready to go again. It's great to have, oh, yeah. yeah, Granite Rocks, one of Granite Rocks' signature events back in person. Yeah. Yeah, 14 years we've been doing this. 14 years. 14 years started mm-hmm. back with uh, Bruce Wolpert and Kevin Jeffrey, and uh, here we are today. How many students do you think we've had go through the program? Have you, oh gosh! Have you calculated that yet? I have. <laughs> I have because it's part of my presentation every year. <laughs> so as of this year, it's over eleven hundred. Wow! Yeah. yeah. So executive, we the, or we just passed the eleven hundred mark. Executive director cool. Christy Sessions yeah. and Roseanne Wolpert, Granite Rocks family owner and chair of the board for the academy. What do we say? No, I am the treasurer. You're the treasurer? <laughs> yes. Okay. So Kevin Jeffrey chairs our board. Okay. And we have Emmett uh, Linder from Driscoll's. Mm-hmm. And I, that's all we have that's right it now. That's currently. We, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah we, we need another member or two, which we've been, well, we're just getting back in gear again. We are. Yeah. Getting back yeah. in gear again. So give us a, an overview of the Bruce W. Wolpert Algebra Academy and the mission of the academy. Well, maybe, Roseanne, maybe can you just speak to what Bruce originally wanted when he started this program, and then I can kind of pick up and yeah, sure. say what where we are today. Well, Bruce absolutely loved math. He was a math major at UCLA. He thought math was fun and exciting and could be used in all kinds of ways and it just he just was very enthusiastic about it and he was very supportive of education particularly in our community he felt that that was our future and we just really needed to support uh, advancement in education and then as now it was you know, there, there were a lot of reports that our students were not up to par in, in mathematics. And um, so he wanted, he, he was a person who got things done. And uh, actually, Ke- Kevin, I believe, maybe suggested it at first. And Bruce went uh, on board and said, let's talk to Honda Hu. Honda is a, a professor of mathematics at CSUMB. And Honda was running boot camps for his students coming into the university. And so um, they got together and Honda said, I'll come and teach eighth graders. So for Bruce, that was, you know, slam dunk. Let's do that. Because eighth grade is at where algebra is taught and that's where students become engaged in math. Either they check out or they become engaged, and he wanted them to become engaged. So that's how it started. So Bruce's own passion for math and wanting to jump into the community and help the kids here. And also, wasn't it he wanted to bring the kids into his business, his company, and show them how Granite Rock works and the possibility that they could have a career here? Well, I don't know if he originally thought that through, but it definitely was a key thing about this program I don't you know it just doesn't happen that students get to come into a business like Granite Rock and Mm -hmm. learn math around people that are using math every day Mm -hmm. in their jobs and and so we've really incorporated that into the program we just had um, uh, Reed talking about geology and how he uses math in geology and how much fun it is to be a geologist and how much fun it is to work in construction and would love to have these kids come back and get jobs at Granite Rock. Yeah. Yeah. We, we want people in our community to, we, we want students, young people in our community to come back and work here because then we know they're more likely to stay. If they grew up here, they're more likely to stay. Their families are here, yeah. their roots mm-hmm. are here. So mm-hmm. that's part of, that's a sideline that's um, just a great part of what we do. And Driscoll's mm-hmm. as well. Driscoll's is absolutely on board. Same thing. They want 
to develop our community, have people, these young people come back and work for them. Mm-hmm. So it's a great partnership. Yeah, it's a great connection, you know, between the companies and the community oh, and inspiring these kids to mm-hmm. want to um, improve their math and, and become passionate about math. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not easy for everyone. <laughs> no, it's not. And so in the inception in 2010, um, they started with one school, Rolling Hills, which is local to Granite Rock. It's right behind the corporate office. And it went well. And they, you know, continued it. And now, fast forward 14 program years later, we work with 14 schools locally. 14. Yep. 14 schools. Like I said, over 1,100 students that we've worked with. And... You know, it's it's big. We have our sites here at Granite Rock. We have one at Driscoll's. And these are kids that they were recommended for the program. Their teachers and their principals really see something in them. And, and they know that these are kids that, given the opportunity, really could excel, like Roseanne was saying. And so it's, it's really fun to be able to bring those kids together and have them be in an environment with other kids like them who like math, who are good at math, because a lot of times in the schools, you know, in their classrooms, they don't always have the same kind of abilities and skills and interests in their classes in the regular public schools. And so they don't, you know, maybe they're dumbing themselves down at school. Maybe they're just pretending like they don't like math. But given this opportunity, this is sort of an eye-opening thing for them, and they get to be excited to excel. And, mm-hmm. and so that's really exciting for me to see. And they make friends. We hear from our high school mentors that they made friends when they were at the Algebra Academy that they still talk to today. Our mentors just a couple of days ago were saying that to me. So that's really exciting too. Um, but yeah, I think that business connection is huge. And that's one of my favorite things about this program is that, like Roseanne said, these kids don't get those opportunities. It's not something that they get to do, go into a business and, you know, in an actual working environment where they can see people working just, you know, 20 feet from them. And they get to see that and they get to picture themselves in those environments. And that was something that was so important to Bruce. And so that's something that we really strive to bring forward. And sure, we could have our program at a school. Absolutely. But the kids are always at school. (laughs) That doesn't make it special. And I feel like they're, it's special here. It feels special to them. It feels special to their families. You know, their families take a lot of pride in the kids being at this program as well. And then, you know, their siblings come through and they're excited that their little sibling is coming through. And so the whole thing just really, it gives me chills. It makes me feel like we really are carrying that on that Bruce really was so passionate about. And we can keep that rolling, which I, I think is really important. Yeah, and most kids don't want to go to school in the summer. But right. if you say, "Do you want to go to Granite Rock for a week in the summer?" They're like, "Sure, There's a little bit more interest." Free lunch. Yeah, free lunch. free lunch, and then yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about how are these kids selected? Because it's not just um, anyone can come, right? I mean, there's a selection process. Talk us through that. There is. We start by we we maintain close relationships with our schools, and we know the teachers. I know the teachers and the principals on first name basis. And, and they know the kids best, so we start with them. And the teachers, the seventh grade teachers, recommend the seventh graders from their school that they really feel would make a good um, candidate for a program, that would be a good match. So they have the maturity, they have the skills, they have the, d- the desire, most importantly. And we receive that list, and then depending on the size um, of the group that's being recommended, depending on the year in our facility, we may run um, an entrance exam, if that's something that we need to do to really hone in on the right size group that we're looking for. And we're looking for kids who have strength in math so that we can start a little bit higher up and really push them. And so it, it is a program that's advanced. It's a program that's rigorous, and we want them to be successful. Mm-hmm. And so we start at that level. And from there, you know, we have meetings with the parents. We meet with the schools, lots of communication and sharing about what we do. And they enroll, and here they are. It so you happens. Want, you want kids who want to be here rather we than do. you being forced to come. Yes. yes. Yeah, and there's always that sense of like, oh, I'd rather be sleeping right now, right, or hanging <laughs> out with friends. In the summer. <laughs> yeah, there's always yeah. that. Yeah. But you know, really, for the most part, when it comes right down to it, they do want to be here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's so important. 
Walk us through sort of the structure and the activities of the week. What are exactly are the kids doing while they're here? So we present a structure that is familiar to them. So we have class sessions, kind of like when they're at school, they have a class session and then they have a break and then they go back to class. So we have that same structure for them. So it's familiar. Um, They're working with the same instructor from the university during the day. And we have games. We build in different kinds of uh, team building activities, uh, board games in the afternoon, We're lucky enough to have a wonderful cohort of high school mentors who are alumni who've come back to work with us. So we have our high schoolers and we have our um, teaching assistants from the universities that come in. And so we do panels with them so that the kids can get to know them on a different level. And we ask the, the mentors, you know, what do you remember about the academy? What would you tell your eighth grade self if you could go back and give yourself some advice as an eighth grader? What would you tell yourself? And they get to share their stories about math and how they've you know, gone through their classes and what they're studying in the university. And so it's just neat. We find that the kids really connect the most to those younger team members, especially yeah. the high schoolers, because they're closer in age to them. Yeah. And so they can relate to them more. And they're cool. So They're cool, yes. <laughs> cool, yes. right? Because they're, they're older. So and they like math. And they like math, <laughs> which is even better, right? It it's like a cool them. older teen who likes <laughs> yes. math. So It makes them such great role models because mm-hmm. they're kind, they're hardworking, they're really good at math, super smart, but they just embody everything that we hope for these students. You know, they've got these goals that are incredible. And it's so fun for me to see, we have all seniors this year that have come back to work with us. And they just, gosh, it just makes me so proud. Not to think that we are responsible for that because well, I, know there, I know there are other factors. <laughs> but they have such fond memories of being here. And I like to think that it really affected their lives and where they go from here. Mm-hmm. That's great. Tell us about the instructors. I know we have UC Santa Cruz and Cal State Monterey Bay, which are the two I mean, prominent universities in our uh, backyard here. Uh, but a uh, professor who has been with the academy since day one, he was part of the original program with Bruce, and he still plays a role today. Is that, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's over at Driscoll's right now. And um, Noah Doss is another CSUMB instructor that we have working alongside Honda over at Driscoll's. And um, here at Granite Rock, we're fortunate to have Justin Lake here joining us again from UC Santa Cruz. Fantastic. And we're just, they are so dedicated to what we do year in and year out. And I think that is also a testament to our program and, and what we do and to be able to have these people who year after year, they wanna come back, they wanna work with us, they're excited for the Algebra Academy. You know, they don't have to do that during their summer either. And they're choosing to come and teach these kids. And so we're we're fortunate to have them as well. Yeah, and why college professors? I mean, you could get high school uh, math teachers in here, right? But is there um, sort of a reason for the college? Is it to motivate the kids or what's the story behind having the colleges involved? I think one of the uh, great things about it is that they are able to throw in a little bit of what's coming in the future. So it's not just, oh gosh, you know, the same old, same old, we get this in at, at school. It's, it's a little bit, maybe it's a little bit of calculus or a little, Honda does wonderful, fun games with math. You know, he'll, he'll, he, he will do almost magic tricks using math and it really lights the kids up. Like, how did he do that? <laughs> and so that, that's the kind of thing that a university professor is, you know, that they're great at. So, and, and I think it just, it increases the level of the, uh, instruction in in some ways, and it's it's impressive. You know, mm-hmm. these kids are these kids are getting really special people. So um, I think it just adds to the to the integrity of the program. Yeah, it must be exciting for them too to to come home and say, "Hi, I had a college professor teach yeah. my my summer mm-hmm. math program." Right, yeah. and we yeah. did. You know, we had a, a young man from CSUMB who was a graduate student. Just for example, he was he studied uh, shark 
Yeah, you ex- oh, you explain yeah. it. You you do a better <laughs> job. But he he would bring in <laughs> shark jaws and he'd say, how do how do you think? Can you calculate how much of a, how many grams of fish can this shark bite? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and the like force, that. the force with which the jaws close when it's yeah. eating. Wow. It was they were actual shark jaws. And, <laughs> and that's really the impressive. research that he's doing. Uh-huh. And and then he'd show slides of, of sharks and, and ask the kids, okay, what kind of shark is this? And and we'd uh, would have students who were really into sharks and they'd know these obscure you know, types of sharks and yeah. just really get excited about it. So that's the kind of thing that you just don't necessarily get in elementary school. Yeah, no. Yeah, you definitely don't. <laughs> uh, one of the highlights, I think, for the kids of this week is the actual visit to Cal State Monterey Bay. Can you talk a little bit about what they do there and the purpose behind that visit? What are you aiming to do? Yeah, so they... First of all, they run an incredible program at CSUMB, not just for their own students, but for our students, for any groups that come on site, they really just are so accommodating and they've got such a great team. They have, we have speakers, um, we have Wolpert Scholars who are gonna be speaking from the university. Tell we us have, a little bit about Wolpert Scholars real quick ooh, for Roseanne. people who don't know. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is really so cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, CSUMB has been just a tremendous partner with Algebra Academy from the very beginning. And when Bruce passed, you know, they suggested that, that we uh, create a scholarship in his honor, which we've done, and it's a mathematics scholarship. So students at CSUMB who are math, who declare themselves as math majors, Uh, are eligible for this scholarship. And the first priority is students who graduated from our Algebra Academy. And the second priority is students who graduated from uh, high schools in the Pajaro Valley in this region. And uh, so it's, it's a nice thing to be able to offer. And we've had a number of students, you know, over the years get this scholarship. One that uh, we're really proud of is a young man from Watsonville who was a, you know, he graduated from CSUMB as a major in math, and right now he's a professional soccer player. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and he's going to be talking to the students this week, right? I think so. Actually, they they heard back from him, and he can't leave. Oh, his, he's probably got his a game. His team is practicing, <laughs> and he can't miss the practices. Oh, okay. So that was, that was unfortunate, but yeah, he's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's basically their, we call them Wolpert Scholars, and, okay. and they're able to come back and talk to the kids about their journey with mathematics. Oh, that's exciting. And Christy, you were saying this is part of the uh, CSUMB yeah. visit? Part of the, the intro, they'll be hearing from those mm-hmm. students, and one of them is a Wolpert Scholar who was an alumni of the program, so... And he's actually a TA over at Driscoll's right now. Mm -hmm. So they get to hear from lots of different people. Honda will be there doing his little (laughs) (laughs) magic trick, as Roseanne (laughs) called it. Yeah, magic tricks that he does with (laughs) predictions with math. And the students go, oh my gosh, how did you know? He predicts their birthdays. (laughs) What? It's really cool. He predicts their birthdays. He goes through this whole series of, I I can't even explain. (laughs) I don't know 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 how he does it. It's magic. Math is magic. It's really cool. I can see. You can guess the year. <laughs> yeah, go go. Okay, yeah, I got yeah. your year figured out. Yeah, so um, they'll be doing that, and then they go to lunch at the Dining Commons, which is always really exciting for the students because they're on the campus and they get to go in and eat whatever they want. So that's always a highlight. Among and then, the other college students, yes. Oh, they're among sitting the with the other college students. students. So There's it's always not people there in oh, the summer. Wow. Um, And then afterwards, they have these lab rotations planned for the kids. And so they do all kinds of things like from fog collecting, because it gets foggy in Marina where CSUMB is. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Fog collecting to uh, video game creation. They study, there's a shells um, rotation where they're actually studying the formation of shells. They do, gosh, they're going to be doing a bubble, um, a bubble lab where they actually have these things and they look at the structure of bubbles. And so just so many fun, hands-on things that, you know, we can't bring all that to them here. As cool as Granite Rock is, we can't bring all of that here. So it's really neat to be able to go and utilize what they have. So it's just, it's fun. 
it's really fun. They just have a good time. It sounds like it. Yeah, yeah that's really cool yeah. to be able to see a college campus and mm-hmm. you're barely in junior high. Yeah, exactly. I just mentioned a couple of other really great things about the program. One is that we do have uh, offer field trips. It's very difficult right now. The schools are under a lot of stress yeah. in our community yeah. with a shortage of teachers, turnover. So it's difficult for the schools to accommodate uh, our our wanting to do these field trips. They just don't have the teachers to cover, but we do offer them. And we've gone out to the quarry for a number of years Mm -hmm. and- To Granite Rocks Quarry. To Granite Rocks Mm -hmm. Quarry uh, in Aromas and been able to, you know, our geologists show them on site, this is what we do. And uh, so that, that is wonderful. And we've also tried to encourage the, the schools to offer math, festivals in the schools and you know again that's a cool factor here's the Mm -hmm. older students are able to talk about math they wear their bruce w wolpert algebra academy Mm t-shirts very cool have their backpacks Mm -hmm. and teach younger students they run they run math games basically with the younger students and say this this is fun so it's what we're trying to do is develop a culture of mathematics excellence mm-hmm. that would be that that is the overreaching goal is to create a culture of mathematics excellence in the pajaro valley san benito county region so our, our mm-hmm. close in region mm-hmm. so a lot of what you're talking about is beyond just this one week beyond just mm-hmm. the immersion week in the summer that you're continuing to provide support throughout the school year and ongoing right we yeah. really want to keep that momentum going because mm-hmm. we, we build momentum during this week and we want that to continue throughout the year and we want the kids to help be a part of that yeah. so those are our those are our ultimate goals yeah and That's and cool. you know so during the covid pandemic when that in 20 when we were first hit with that it was like we were stunned is this the end of the algebra academy we just had Mm-hmm. Everyone was just mm-hmm. back on their heels. Like, what are we going to do? Because we're and thinking we're not essential. I mean, people are people are like, we have to do the essentials just to right. you know yeah. survive, basically. And totally. so we're thinking we're not essential. Yeah. And Christy did an amazing job of keeping it going with online learning. Very difficult. So difficult. Kept this thing going. So I have to hand it to Christy. She's been amazing. She's just been a really yeah. awesome director for this program really appreciate your work oh, on that thank you wow. I really do thank you that means a lot it is amazing it's my pleasure oh it's really. so cool especially during the pandemic like she's saying when all the learning was shifted online i i don't know many teachers who were able to make that effective so mm-hmm. huge yeah kudos to you yeah. um you know and so we're really still coming out of that this yeah. is the first that we've been able to be in person mm-hmm. in four years mm-hmm. gosh i cannot and i mean four years yeah, yeah. i yeah. know so four years <laughs> and so christy is in a position now of you know here here we are now let's see where we go from here mm-hmm. but, yeah. but it's been uh, it's been really a fulfilling journey mm-hmm. and granite rock yeah. people have been awesome being able to step in and oh from everything gosh. from directing traffic to the best. Uh, sh- you know sharing their their hearts of what how much they <laughs> love this company and what they get yeah. to do here mm-hmm. so it's it's uh, and oh and maybe dealing blackjack on friday afternoon <laughs> or <laughs> And listening yeah. to the noise level and the yeah. bunch of 13-year-olds running in and out of the bathrooms, we try and keep it down. But <laughs> yeah. so Granite Rock people have really been a great uh, support. And mm-hmm. same thing for Driscoll's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Driscoll's uh, has been a wonderful partner. Yeah. yeah. We really great. couldn't do what we do without the people who are behind the scenes who are supporting us. I mean, yeah. and that goes... For everybody, the people who work at Granite Rock and Driscoll's are, you know, our instructors who come in, the mentors, the teachers, we couldn't do it without anybody, any of those people. So we, we never take for granted the people who work with us because we know that they're choosing to. We're basically running a a one week school Mm -hmm. 
once a year, which is kind of unique. Mm-hmm. It's so <laughs> unique. Are there other programs like this? I mean, is this, this seems like a, there are one in some. There's similar. There are some similar. similar um, but what I've found in the research I've done is a lot of them are um, fee-based. So families pay for their students to come and take part in a great opportunity, which is fantastic. We don't charge our families. We're a nonprofit that is funded and we don't need our families to pay. And I think that, I think when parents hear that, it's the little light bulb, like (laughs) what? We get to have this extra opportunity that's really, really cool, first of all, and really beneficial. And they get to do all these things and see all these things and we don't have to pay. (laughs) And the school districts provide a bus. I mean, what more could we ask for? Amazing. (laughs) Wow. I mean, a lot of programs like that would be like hundreds of dollars. Oh, thousands. No, thousands. Oh, thousands. I saw a program, I think it was about $1,200 for a week for the students. Wow. And and so Mm -hmm. the Bruce W. Wilford Algebra Mm -hmm. Academy is a nonprofit. It's not part of Granite Rock or Driscoll's Mm -hmm. heavily supported Mm -hmm. by you know, providing volunteer help and uh, a site and just all the benefits that that means. But it is a separate not-for-profit organization. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome, you guys. Any plans for the future that we want to share or any (laughs) just keep it going and bring it back again next summer, keep it going through the school year? Gosh, we have so many hopes. Yeah. We have so yeah. many hopes and yeah. goals and dreams for the program. We were looking at and really actively working on expanding into Monterey County when the mm-hmm. pandemic hit, mm-hmm. but that obviously had to be you know, put on hold, and so we mm-hmm. haven't gotten to that yet. And it is that is one of the limitations of a once-a-year program, mm-hmm. is you don't get to say, well, next month we'll do this mm-hmm. differently. No, it's next year we'll do this mm-hmm. differently. So mm-hmm. it's a slow moving organization in yeah. that way right. yeah. yeah yeah although we're constantly working christy's working with uh faculty on um, updating the curriculum making mm-hmm. sure that it um, connects with what is going on in the schools mm-hmm. and and did we mention that we have local teachers that are also participating in the program maybe no, in passing we, but that's a huge part of what we do too is the eighth grade teachers from a lot of our participating schools come and they spend their weeks with us too. So, I mean, gosh, again, summertime. Right. When I was in the classroom, I was in my classroom working during this first week in August every year, but they're choosing to be with us. And And they're, and they're paid for their time as are our mentors. Mm -hmm. And it's actually an enrichment opportunity for teachers Mm -hmm. because they're learning techniques and ideas from other teachers from the faculty mm-hmm. so it's uh it's a benefit for teachers as well which is really important yeah yeah and those yeah. kids who are incoming eighth graders will get to connect with the teachers before their school year even starts so these kids will be eighth graders starting in a couple of weeks and those teachers will be their math teachers and so yeah. they get to know them and yeah. that's that's a neat special connection that they get to have before the other students do how to get a head start mm-hmm. on, on math and yeah, yeah your class work ahead of time that's yeah. great yeah very cool yeah. well congratulations amazing that you were able to bring this through the pandemic like you did and Thank keep you. it going yeah. uh, when there was a lot of doubt cast mm-hmm. about the future and what was going to be possible but amazing and it's so great to see all that energy here in the corporate <laughs> office and the lots young faces <laughs> yeah lots of energy which is great it's short-lived it it's only the week a week goes on yeah <laughs> it does the energy does, does. Yeah. yeah of course yeah because then they've gotten comfortable they've yes. gotten used to each other <laughs> they've gotten used to the instructors yeah yeah well Awesome. I'm so thankful that you guys were able to break away for a little bit and have this conversation. Thank you so much. It was really nice to sit and talk. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for not, you know, throwing any (laughs) curveballs. My pleasure, Roseanne. (laughs) She had me a little worried. I know. I was a little worried. (laughs) I'm like, come on, I told you. I'm I'm really easy. (laughs) 